I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is October 24th. The year is 2022, and we are streaming live right here on YouTube. Whether you are returning to my channel or you are brand new visiting here, I am so glad that you've joined me. It's a privilege to have you. Now, tonight I have some amazing cards to share with you. Now, I'm going to demonstrate one, but I've got three others to share with you. But the good news is, is we're going to do something really fun and creative tonight with Designer Series Paper. The demonstration is going to be a Christmas card, but I also have an alternative Christmas card for you. But I also have a wedding card. And my bonus sample for tonight's live stream is also a wedding card. Great news is this fun fold can be used for anything, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, a couple of things before we get started. First and foremost, you're not going to want to miss that free project sheet. When tonight's live stream is over, I've linked it down in the video description for you below. And that link is going to take you over to the pictures, the cutting dimensions, the supplies. And guess what? I put a template in there for you tonight. So it's easy for you to recreate this at home. Additionally, I would love to chat with you during tonight's live stream. And perhaps maybe even you're watching the replay. But in order to do that, YouTube requires that you log in using your Gmail address to chat or comment. So please do that. I come back and I read every single comment. Your feedback is really important to me. And then finally, I want to make sure that you know all about Gina Curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name in blue off to the side. She's here moderating the live chat. And you might recognize part of that last name. Gina is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio and an avid stamper. She's been stamping with me the entire 24 years. I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and more than able and capable of answering your questions and providing you links if you have them. There's just no way for me to keep up with the comments and the live stream. But guess what? We do a live Q&A when this demonstration is over, so I would love to have you stick around for me. All right, there's one more thing I want to chat with you about, and then we're going to stamp. I just want to give you a friendly reminder as I change screens here to this. Right now, Stampin' Up! is offering a custom starter kit promotion, which means you're going to be able to choose $155 in product of your choice and pay a reduced price of only $99, and that kit ships for free. Guess what? It also entitles you to shop at a continued discount of 20% off clear to the end of April 2023. I know it may sound too good to be true, but it's not. And you can get all the information over on my website at lisastampstudio.com and then click join. Of course, you can always contact me if you have more questions. We would love to add you to my stamping team. All right, we're ready. Let's get started. Just push those buttons off to the side and we are going to use this trimmer in a big way tonight. Now I'm going to start off this fun fold by telling you I'm going to work on white cardstock. The one in your project sheet has a red cardstock base and I'll show you that one too. And I'm doing that because we're going to mark the heck out of this tonight because I want to make it easy for you to recreate this at home. Nothing about this is hard, but we are doing multiple cuts and scores. Please remember, if you are not proficient with your paper trimmer, it's okay. Get out a ruler and a pair of scissors. You got this. All right. So I always like to start with the vertical score lines and they're super easy. So the first one's going to be at four inches. I probably should tell you the size of this, right? I got all excited. It's eight inches by 12. So for this, you'll need 12 by 12 cardstock and you're going to be able to cut some off. We're going to use some of that for a closure, which is going to be fun for me to teach you as well. I've got some great card making tips for you too. So again, eight by 12. We're going to do the first score line at four inches. So we're going to line that up here. I love this trimmer because it's going to include both the scoring and the cutting blades. You can leave them on the track at the same time. They navigate up and out of the way. You're going to see how beneficial that is. There's a ledge here at the top. There's also one at the bottom so that your cardstock can rest here to make it nice and straight. All right, so chatting away, I want to make sure I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Four inches and we're going to score. Now the next one is at eight inches. So we're going to open up that extendable arm. Got to love that. So we got all of our scrapbookers covered as well. And over here, we're going to do a little bit more scoring. So we're going to score at eight. Now we're going to turn this. Let's go ahead and close this so I can be a little bit more inside of your camera view. And we're holding it now the long way. So this is the short edge here at the top. And we're going to score at two inches, but watch. Now let's do this. I know I told you I was, this was kind of my cheat sheet so I can kind of show you. I am going to make marks here and here. This is the four inch line. 
and this is the eight inch line. I always, you know, it's easy when I do it myself, but I want to be able to teach you. So those are the score lines. We're turning it. Now this first line and the next line, we're going to do a combination of score and cut. It's okay. We got this, right? Two inches. We're going to line that right up here at the top. Here's the two inches. The very first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut to here, to that pencil scored line. And I'm going to keep my head out of your camera view. I'm going to lift this up. My finger there is going to keep that blade out of the way because now I'm going to navigate the scoring blade to that score line. And we want to score between here and here. I'm going to move it up just a little bit so you can see. And we're going to score. Now I'm just going to slide that up as long as I'm not pressing, it's not scoring the paper. And then here at the bottom, you see that scoring blade all the way down there? It barely fits in your screen, but I am going to crease that all the way up to here. So now I have cut. So we've cut, scored, cut. Okay. We are going to slide over to the six inch and that's all the way here against the edge. And we are in essence going to kind of do the exact same thing. So I'm going to bring my blade up to the top, which is to cut, and we are going to cut up to that score line. So we are going to slice right up to there. Now there's a little marker on this trimmer on both sides of the blade that you cannot see, which gives you an indication where to stop. And it is clear so you can see impossible for you on the video. I know that, but I know I can see it in person. I'm going to move that blade out of the way because I'm going to navigate that down to that scoring section and we're going to score in the center area from here to here. Okay. And I'm bringing that back up. And now again, here I am at the bottom and we are going to cut up. So I'm going to cut up to here. Not so bad, right? All right. Well, let's have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to show you what we've got. We've got this, a larger section here, another section here. This is basically symmetrical at this point, which means we've got two narrow panels here and then we've got our center panels. We're going to do some cutting away. Again, not hard, just bear with me. I'm going to do a little bit of drawing here so that you know. We are going to cut away this box and this box. We're not going to need them for this fun fold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate this down so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to line this back up at the four inch mark because that was where that score line was. And I'm just going to cut away with that blade down to here. Again, if you are not proficient with your trimmer, don't worry about it. Okay. You can use your scissors. Now we can do the same thing down here. So I'm still on that four inch line. And this is where that clear cutting guide and that rotating blade from the top to the bottom is a champ. So we are going to cut up to here and we're taking down that panel. Oh, I just cut off the wrong one. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Well, we're going to pretend that Lisa did that right. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, let's tape this back together really quick. I've got one, like I said. I said to Gina three times, I bet you 10 to 1 as I'm chatting away, I'm going to cut the wrong side. And I bet you're all at home going, no, you cut the wrong one. Okay, this one. I even marked it. Good heavens. I'm going to tell you what. There is a semi-art to be able to talk and cut at the same time, and you can tell I'm not a pro at it. Okay, from here to here, we're going to take out that box. <laughs> If you don't think I make mistakes, you should come see my trash can. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to semi-redeem myself. So these are gone now. Perfect. These are going to work in a second to Chris cause. You guys are all laughing. I see your comments. Here at the bottom, I want to make these flaps a little bit shorter. This is four inches. Remember that score line? I just want to cut that in half. So let's turn this. <laughs> I do love how I scotch taped it back together. Oh, heavens. All right two inches here and then we're going to come to the top and we are just going to cut this in half right up to that cut line. I just want to get rid of part of that. Okay. So now this flap is a little bit smaller. <laughs> I hope you're giggling with me because you know what? It, this is not a science. This is an art, right? So four inches again, here's that line. And this time I'm just going to cut from the bottom up at two inches. So I want to make sure that I move this over. I love those printed lines here. And of course you could flip the cardstock if that's easier for you. Here I thought I was going to make it all nice and simple. Look at that. I cut the panel right off. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is what you end up with. Kind of cool, huh? So these are going to be able to fold and this is also going to fold. But there's one more thing we've got to do. You guys were yelling, no, I see that. I see that. We are going to cut these on an angle because I want this to intersect. 
So what we're going to do now is we are going to cut from this top corner to this corner. The easiest way for me personally is to fold this down. Now, if you are at home and you are using a ruler and a pencil, go ahead and line that up and draw your line, okay? So I'm gonna kind of go like this and I'm gonna navigate this in my trimmer. This is one of the reasons I absolutely love this trimmer is because of this clear guide. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to align the top tip here and the bottom tip inside that thin black strip, which is where the blade is going to travel, okay? Now I'm gonna to talk to you about anchoring the blade. If you've ever cut cardstock in a very narrow corner or at a point, you might notice if your blade's not sharp, it kind of gets jammed, it crinkles up the paper. So anchoring your blade means you're bringing the blade up to where there's more paper to anchor it down. So I'm gonna drop it and I'm gonna slice this way and this way. And that is going, oh, okay, this is not my knife. This is just <laughs> totally not my knife. All right, you know what, friends? This is what we're going to do. This Lisa's going to have to just kind of just tell you she messed up. We're going to use the pencil. And I'm going to show you that gorgeous template. I said to myself, Lisa, you're going to mess this up tonight. I know because you're chatting. Here's the other cut. Oh my goodness. I hope you're watching this if you've been here before and you are just giggling your head off. I was going to cut the whole thing over again, but you know what? I've got one I've redeemed myself. Let's just cut this back together. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I make a template for every card that I teach you. And I usually teach it better than this. Look at it. So let's go to here to here. You know, I did do that one other time. And I'm just going to line this up. And I'm going to do that pencil line. Okay? So when we cut it away, this is going to be gone. Okay? And we're going to do the exact same thing here. Oh, my gosh. I swear to you, it's not hard. I just made it look really hard. And then we're going to fold these in to make it easier. So we're going to cut these away. Tip to tip, oh my gosh. I know you guys are crazy and just laughing or making comments in the live chat and I'm just gonna apologize for that. But you know what? Paper crafting is about learning, right? Okay, not pretty at all, right? Okay, but here's the good news. I am gonna show you what I made you. So this is inside your project sheet. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so the dark areas are what you're gonna cut off. And then the dashes are going to be score lines and the straight lines are going to be cut. I could not have made this any easier for you. You're going to see all the dimensions and you're going to follow this at home. And I promise you, you got this. All right. So when you're not here watching me, this is how it looks when you don't have to tape it. Oh my goodness gracious. You know, I always say, if you can't laugh at yourself, what good is it, right? This is how we learn. What we're going to do now is we are going to crease up on those score lines. Again, remember the very first time you're doing this at home, I would recommend you get out those pencils, you make your little marks per your template, and you're gonna be good to go. In essence, what we're going to have here is a total of six folds. So I'm just gonna crease all these up and this is all gonna to come together. And then we've got one more here at the top. There is going to be designer series paper on these panels. Now, of course, if you want to layer color cardstock, you can. I'm going to give you an important tip. If you put too many layers on here, this is going to be very difficult to fold because we have six crease lines, okay? Now, I'm going to bring out the designer series paper, and I'm going to show you about the angled cut as well. So I have four of these. So one is going to go here, one is going to go here. Obviously, one will go here, right? So I'm going to kind of tuck that one here. This is the beauty of Stampin' Up! Designer Paper is that double-sided pattern. Isn't that pretty? So you have all kinds of choices, okay, here and here. Then I have four of these little squares, and they're going to go here, here, and again, you guessed it, here, and here. Remember, it's a fun fold. So you're going to be able to see everything. Now, this designer series paper comes from Sweetest Christmas. You're getting a pretty good look at it tonight, so I didn't bring out the whole package. But I'll show you. Since my base is white, I'm going to stamp right on here. Now, if you don't want to, you can absolutely add a panel like I'm going to do on my red one. You'll be able to see that in just a minute. Now, you might be wondering, what are we doing about these? Well, there's actually a total of four again, which is here and here and then here and here. But you only need two pieces of paper. So this, what I did is I took a square of designer series paper. I'm going to go right on top of that. And I took this on the angle. Remember that angle I messed up earlier? Well, this time I promised to get it right. So we've got a tip here in the track and a tip here in the track. Again, 
we are going to anchor that blade. We are not going to start here or here because it'll have a tendency to want to rip your paper, especially designer series paper. So I'm going to anchor that blade and then we are going to cut. And that's going to give you two halves, which is going to be perfect for this card. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me attach every single one of these panels. All right, I've got that done. So obviously here and here, double-sided paper, which is Stampin' Up's just, that's what they're famous for, beautiful papers. It's going to really expound on your purchase. So I don't know about you, but these green stripes I can use for masculine cards all year round. And I absolutely love that. That makes it really, really versatile and expounds on my purchase. And of course, I can use that for birthday cards and other things as well. All right, because I get to redeem myself, here we go. <laughs> I have brought in this. Now, let me move all those little pieces out of the way so that you have a little better view that's not so congested. All right, so here's what we've got. I'm going to give you an important tip. When you go to lay down these diagonal pieces here, I want you to use liquid glue. I used adhesive for everything else, but you need some wiggle room. Now, this liquid glue is going to work really well, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is the glue sold in my online store. It's the multi-purpose liquid glue. I'm getting it started on my silicone craft sheet so I don't have surprises. Nothing worse than a big clump coming out. I am going to work near the edges because you want to make sure those little points are glued down. I am very heavy-handed with glue, so I drag the tip onto the designer series paper so I don't have a whole lot of clumping. And then what you can do is you can kind of hover over your paper and shimmy it a little bit left and a little bit right to try to give it as even as possible. And then what's going to happen is you're assured as this dries that those tips are not going to lift. Now, one of my very favorite craft room things is this little holder. And I get a lot of questions about this. This is linked for you on my website under craft room favorites. So click on shop and then craft room favorites. You're going to find quite a few things there that I use in conjunction with my Stampin' Up! products just to make my life easier. And I link them there for you as well. I love that because it keeps the glue all the way at the tip. All right, so that's how I adhered all of the points. Quick and easy because these were all with adhesive. Right here in the center tonight, I'm going to do some stamping. So let's go ahead and I'm going to grab my real red ink pad. And I've pulled out this little greeting and let me show you where this came from. This came from the stamp set called Spruced Up. Super cute because they're really bold, simple images. So if you're making last minute Christmas cards, like late November, December, you're gonna love this because you don't have to do any coloring. It's also great for the kids to use because you don't have to worry about the impressions having outline images. This has coordinating dies and they're a champ and you're gonna see that they do outlines as well as solids. So it's really a fantastic set. And I love those mixed fonts. So I'm going to come in with this. It says, may your holiday, what's it say? May it be you, may it be yours this holiday season. I wanted to say something different, I guess. You know, I think somebody said there's holiday uh, Halloween gremlins. Yeah, I think they're here in my studio tonight. All right, there's that little candy cane from that stamp set. I'm going to put that right down here. It's going to bring our little thing together. The closure on this is the one of the things that I want to focus on tonight and I want to teach you. And again, the other cards that I have with this fold are folded differently. So I want to give you some options. All right, the way I did this one is I folded the panels in and I folded this panel up and this panel down. This came in and this came in. This is not too thick for a standard A2 size envelope. It did weigh just under an ounce, so you can still use regular postage on it. Keep in mind, like I told you earlier, if you do a lot of layering, you're going to have a problem closing it. You're going to need to put it in a bubble mailer and it's going to cost you more to mail it. But for me, the closure on this was really kind of big because I didn't want it to pop open. So let's push this off to the side for just a minute. And I'm going to do a belly band, but I'm going to teach you another real cool trick with one of the accessories that I'm going to be using. Now, oftentimes when I put a belly band around a card, the cardstock fibers want to crack. And one of the best tips I can give you is a very gentle pull through your bone folder, which is going to help break down those fibers a little bit, kind of like a curling ribbon, but you don't want to break it down too much. So I am going to pull this on top of here. I'm going to put that flat back to the back so it looks pretty. And then I'm going to kind of connect these. Now you don't want to make this too tight because you want that to expand just a little bit. This should slide. So I'm kind of looking here a little bit left and a little bit right. 
And then when I see you've got a little space, I'm just going to kind of crease on it. Now here what I'm going to do is bring in my adhesive. And I'm going to add a little adhesive on this end. I'm going to add a little adhesive here. This is my Stamp and Seal Plus. It's very, very strong. And then again, making sure I don't make this too tight, I'm looking to align the belly band top and bottom the very best I can. The raw ends to the front is a great tip because we can hide the ugly. Okay? Now, remember I told you about that designer series paper? Well, guess what? There's some patterns in there that you can actually die cut with the dies that are part of that spruced up bundle. But I lent them to Gina. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is not hard. I could just fussy cut this. So this I just used my scissors on. So I wanted to add this in an area where this was not going to show because obviously I was going to have to play with that. So I brought out one of my other favorite die sets and I want to show you that. This is from the Stitched Rectangle Dies and I love these because cascading sizes, they all have that stitched trendy design to them. Great for layering, of course, and that's where I got this from. So I'm going to play this up a little bit with some more of that designer series paper. You're going to find all the cutting dimensions for this in your project sheet along with the template, which after tonight's live and demo, you're going to be really glad you had. I am so sorry, my Stampin' Friends. I do apologize for that. And then we're going to add that here. This is where I want to build upon. So let's go ahead and let's add this first. Very important, you're going to want to put your dimensionals or adhesive on the band because sure enough, we miscalculate. So let's go ahead and let's add those here. And I always gauge where they're supposed to go because we don't want to make sure, we want to make sure that they don't stick out, right? So there we go, we're good. To take off those paper backings with my arthritic hands, I love my Take Your Pick tool. It has that paper piercing tool attachment and allows me to peel those right off. It also allows me to wrangle them. And then I'm gonna put this here. So now this creates a really cute closure. Let's add this and wait till I show you what we're gonna do with that ribbon. That's the fun part. Now, obviously dimensionals or you could use adhesive, whatever you'd like, but I'm gonna go with some dimensionals tonight. So let's add those here. Don't you love how they just fit just right? And you know what? Let's take one more and let's add it here because I think it's gonna fit. And then we're gonna take off those backings. Remember, if any part of your image is gonna fall outside of this area, you need to make sure that you don't put the dimensionals there. And I've got a little puffy showing, so I'm gonna teach you a little card trick here. If you get the dimensional too close to the edge like I have, don't worry, we're in good luck. So I'm gonna add this here on an angle. Take that, take your pick tool with that putty tip and push. That's foam. So if you give that a little poke with that pointy tip, it's gonna go right inside of there and hide it. No sense in peeling it off and fixing it. Okay, here comes a great ribbon tip for you. I just didn't want the ribbon white. It was just too much white. So inside of the designer series papers, I picked up one of the colors. And one of them is actually Sweet Sorbet. Now this is an alcohol-based Stampin' Blends marker. They're dual tips you can see here. I'm gonna use the broad tip. I don't ever like to use that tip and ruin it for anything other than coloring, because that's what I wanna keep that tip nice and sharp for, right? So I'm gonna color my ribbon and I'm gonna lay it on some scratch paper to protect my work surface, but I'm using the side of the marker and I'm dragging it through here, okay? The alcohol base in this is gonna allow this to dry really, really quickly. And this seam binding ribbon is fantastic because it's gonna actually color it on both sides. So you don't have to worry about tying it and it's gonna look weird. Now I did that ahead of time because I want to let that dry and I made just a little tiny bow. And let's go ahead this and add this and add the greeting and then I want to show you the other cards I created. So glue dot right on the back of that knot where no one's going to see it. They're going to think you tied it right on top of that candy cane, which we didn't. And I'm going to move that up tonight. I think I'm going to put that one here. And I did the greeting ahead of time. Now there's lots of things you can do with this depending on how you have your image mounted, you can gravitate this a little left or a little right. I'm going to go ahead and just keep this really simple and I'm going to add some adhesive here. And then I am going to tuck this right underneath here like so. But I thought this kind of was a little bit out of balance. Not maybe so much on this one, but on the red one I'm going to show you next. So I brought in the classic matte dots because I love the accessories and the bling. You can see there's graduating sizes. There's four different shades here, neutrals, which are fantastic. So let's go ahead and just add a little texture to this. And they do have glue dots on the back. 
one right on my finger, and there we go tonight. Boy, it hasn't been a typical night here in the studio, has it so far? But wait, the cards are great. You're going to love them. Okay, so here's the one that I made with you tonight, okay? Here is the one that's in your project sheet in red. I just didn't think that this would be easy to see on camera with the pencil marks, so I opted for this one. This is going to slide off. This is going to open up. You can see there's just lots of holiday cheer throughout, and then this opens here. This would be fantastic for wedding invitations, bridal announcements, showers, you name it, because there's lots of areas here you can put pertinent information. Now I'm gonna slide this off to the side and I wanna show you the other ones that I created. So I'm gonna make a little bit of room here. This next one is also Christmas and this uses the stamp set called Kindest Gnomes. Now, you know, gnomes are really popular. And I brought in the stamp set called Jingle, Jingle, Jingle. And I don't think it's getting enough airtime. It does stamp the outline of the words and then there's a separate solid stamp to give you those little textures inside of there. That's where the jingle bell came from. It's from that stamp set. I just cut it out and stuck it on top of here. Look at those colors, not traditional, but definitely cute. So this is going to slide up. Did you happen to notice that this closure was different than this one because the ankles were on the outside? So I tucked it differently. So this one's going to open this way and then the angles open up and then of course reveals more areas. Okay, super cute, all right? But here come the wedding cards because I had mentioned that cards like this are fantastic for announcements and invitations. So here is the other one that's in your project sheet. I made this one to a wedding card. Wedding colors are hugely popular right now with neutral tones. So the greens and the tans and uh, the light, light blues, even some of those mustard colors. This comes from a bundle called Splendid Thoughts. I added a vellum circle here to anchor all of this because I wanted these pieces not to be in the way when this belly band comes on and off. Do you see too? I stamped the belly band with some of the images in the stamp set, I wrapped some ribbon around there. It's all gonna come off together and you're gonna love this because of the foil. Again, the angles are on the outside for this one. And then the centers are going to open up. So much love on your new life together. Small little image there just to coordinate with the outside. I know foil is blinding on camera, isn't it? But isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Okay, so these are the three that are in your project sheet. However, I have a bonus for you tonight. This last one is just for the live stream. It's not in the project sheet. It uses the exact same template and measurements but I made this one earlier today. Now I wanna show you where this came from since it's not in the project sheet. This is from Happiness Abounds and it's a bundle, which means you get the stamp set and the coordinating dies if you buy the bundle. And I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna want stamps without dies if they're available. So buy them that way and you'll save 10%. That label comes from Labels Aglow. This has been really popular for the holidays. This is in the current mini catalog. And I love that label because I think it works well. And guess what I did? I actually threaded that ribbon through the openings of the label, did some roses and some flowers. I did my congratulations on here, went around the back as well. The designer series paper is from Abigail Rose. I have those little blinky gems and then opening it up this way again. It says, wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. Beautiful. And of course, would make a great invitation. Once again, these could go to the inside and this could all fold up in a different manner. So lots and lots of opportunities to be creative with this card. Now, lots of ideas here tonight, and you're gonna have that fantastic template that's going to be inside your project sheet. That's gonna be an immense help after tonight's debacle with me cutting it. Telling you what, cutting, scoring, and talking, <laughs> it's a lot of work, so I apologize for that. I really hope that you'll give this a try. It is not difficult, I promise you. And I made that template shaded for you so that it's easy to see what pieces are going to be eliminated. Now, a couple things that you need to know because there's something exciting coming up I wanna tell you about. First and foremost, I would love it if you would head over to my website. Go to the very bottom of the page and you'll see the word subscribe near the bottom. If you click on that, and you sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter, I'm gonna provide you a tutorial not shared to my other platforms. No frills, would love to have you join us. I send that out every Thursday. In addition to that, you're gonna find I have a very vast PDF tutorial library there, and you can find all kinds of projects that you can 
download immediately. I do charge $1 per page. That includes all the pictures, the cutting dimensions, the supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions. Now, hang tight. If you're going to stay for the live chat, you can start putting your questions in. Please put the letter Q in front of your questions so that we can feed through those pretty easily here in the live stream chat. Now, I want you to mark your calendars because guess what? Next week is a big week. Gina is going to be here with me live next Monday. That is October 31st. And you might be thinking, that's Halloween. Yeah, we know. We thought it would be a lot of fun to be together. We have a fantastic card for you. And are you ready? Six samples. We'll be demonstrating side by side. There's always two ways to do something and neither is right or wrong. And we love giving you all those added tips about different ways to adhere and create some really wonderful projects. So I hope that you'll be with us next week, October 31st, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right here on my YouTube channel. All right, if you're staying for the live Q&A, if you would put a Q in front of your question, I would be happy to answer those for you now. I am going to move these out of the way and very candidly reach over for my mouse so that I can scroll up and get your questions. Uh, let me, I learned a new little fun thing in here and I'm gonna give that a whirl. I'm reaching over cause I wanted to make sure that I've got everything up here for you. All right, so we've got some questions. And hold on one second, they're scrolling. Thank you for the kind words. All right, so Joan has a question and her question is, is where did you get the personalized stamp on the back of your cards? I can't hide anything from you guys, can I? All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna turn the camera down and I'm gonna give you a quick look at this so that you can see it. So I did Handmade by Lisa Stamp Studio and of course it has my website address on it. I did this at vistaprint.com because Stampin' Up! doesn't do personalized stamps any longer. So I apologize for that. Um, I want to make sure that you are aware of that. Okay, I want to go take another question here. Uh, hold on. Okay, Pat has a question. Saw on my October class video with your glue dots and they were tied with ribbon. It looked like it was a way to make them easier to use. How does that work? Ooh, Pat, I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Um, glue dots where they were tied with ribbon. Hmm. I think I would ask you to send me an email, please. And if you can kind of give me a link or a picture, I would be happy to answer that. But I can't off the top of my head kind of picture what you're asking. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Dashira has a question and she is, is it possible to heat emboss on foil? Yeah, it is. I'm going to warn you though, you have to use the embossing buddy, which is the anti-static powder bag first. Um, you're going to want to be really careful because foil has a different consistency than paper. Obviously, when you powder it, it's still going to want to statically stick that powder to the foil. So really important you powder it with that embossing buddy first and then don't overheat it because it will look embedded versus raised. But I would say experiment with uh, some scrap gold foil, but yes, I've done it. And yes, you can. That's a great question. Uh, okay, I'm trying to see here. Um, station, okay, Deb is asking Gina for the address for Station 12 in Cape Coral, or, I'm sorry, in Fort Myers. Uh, my nephew's the fire captain there and they suffered quite a bit of devastation during Hurricane Ian. And we've been flooding them with just a lot of we care about you cards to the firehouse. So Gina, maybe you could do that for me. Um, okay, this question doesn't have a name, but I want to ask it. I'm drowning in designer series paper. What is the most efficient way to organize it by title or category, like flowers, etc.? Kathy, thank you for putting your name at the end. You know, it's really a personal decision on how you organize it. Behind me, okay, it's this way in the camera, you'll see that there are clear sleeves there. Those clear sleeves are the best investment I made. Go over to my website under shop and then craft room favorites. I have them linked for you. It's a heavy duty um, kind of frosted plastic pocket. And I put my designer series paper in there. And I know you think this is going to be crazy, but I actually use a little piece of scotch tape and I fold back a corner and I write on the scotch tape in a Sharpie marker the name of the designer series paper. So they're all labeled from the side so that I can see them. I keep all my florals in one section. I keep all my holidays in a separate section, but it's really a matter of preference. I know because the designer series papers with Stampin' Up! are double-sided, the alternate side I can use most of the time throughout the year. So even though it's in a Christmas section, I know I can go to those patterns and use them too. I think that's a great question. I hope that helps you. 
All right, I'm looking for some more questions. Um, oh gosh, I'm scrolling, bear with me. Stephanie has a question. When a new catalog arrives, do you order everything that is new or do you pick and choose? Stephanie, I wish I could buy everything. That's not even possible. Financially, we'd be broke. Uh, no, I pick and choose. So I plan for about so oh, three to six months of events. So that would be card class, of course, or what I'm going to teach you. I find the things that speak to my heart. I find that certain things that just kind of get my attention. I know you know what that's like. You look through the catalog and you're like, oh, I love that waterfall set. Oh, I love that rose set. So I get the things that I'm really passionate about because that makes it easier for me to design with. But that's a really good question. So no, I don't get everything. All right, one last question. And uh, let's see. Okay, I answered a couple of these of the same. So bear with me, one last one. All right, I'm still scrolling. One last one. Uh, okay, Ellen has a question. Okay, Ellen, let me click on you. Show your glue dots roll. What, <laughs> that's what the question is about. Okay, let me turn the camera down for you guys. All right, so the Stampin' Up! glue dots. Oh, I wanna say it's been over a year now. The manufacturer changed how the glue dots were on here. They used to be between the layers of the paper. Not anymore. They're actually on the back side of the top of the paper. And I'm going to be honest with you, quite frustrating. However, Remedy, thanks to my dear friend Jill, she told me, tie a piece of ribbon around there to keep some tension here so that when you slide this, you only pull off a little bit at a time. And that has been a saving grace. So just pull out a piece of ribbon scrap and just tie it on there and cinch it kind of tight. And then I can just kind of manipulate this back and forth so that I can just reveal a little at a time. It's better than all that paper becoming unwound. I don't like to pull these while they're in the box because I have had them dispense into the box itself and then stick and then they get wasted. All right, now I know I said I wasn't gonna answer one more question, but I thought that this one was really critical. And this is from Lori. She wanted to know how tonight's card was going to stand up. And you know what, that's an excellent question. Now I know a lot of you are really big into cards for display. Um, so I probably would display it like this. I know it's kind of hard to see. So this then comes up like this. So this card will stand up this way. And I will be telling you, it can open up this way as well. So it can make it like a little box and it will stand. So it's just, it's just a matter of preference on how you want to do this. But that is an awesome question. Awesome question. Um, thank you all for your questions tonight. And I am so glad that you were here joining me. I look forward to having you join Gina and I Monday of next week, which is going to be October 31st. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and I look forward to seeing you then. Have a good evening.